In this video we're going to take a look at absolute value functions. So let's just look back at something that we've learned earlier. And that is first of all to define what a function is. So a function, and we usually use the notation f of x, is just a relation or a relationship between two variables, but usually between x and y, so that there is at most one value of y for each value of x. And so the easiest way to see this is with some graphics. So if I give you a couple of examples that are functions and then compare it to one that is not a function, hopefully that'll trigger you remembering what these are. So here's something that's a function. For each x value there is at most just one y value. And oops. Here's another function. This maybe goes here. Maybe we've got something here. For each x value, there is at most one. You'll notice here there's none. That's OK. There's no y values at all. That's fine. Um, in comparison, maybe this. And now you'll see, well, there are points that have none. Uh, there's a point right here that has one, but a lot of these points have two, and since you can have at most one, this is not a function. There was something called the vertical line test as well. So if you ran a vertical line straight up and down, it will only hit one time, at most one time, anywhere on your graph. Whereas here, as soon as you hit two times, um, then it is not a function. So let's start off with, we've got a function and move on to what does an absolute value function look like? Well, the basic absolute value function has this equation, which is written y equals and then absolute value of x. And as a graph, it looks like this. So if I make up a table of values, my table of values, I don't need too many points to see the pattern, maybe minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And I absolute value those points. So negative 3 absolute is 3 and 2 and 1 and the positive ones just stay where they are and I plot these points so 0 0 and 1 1 and 2 2 and 3 3 and hopefully you can see that pattern and minus 1 1 and minus 2 2 and minus 3 3 and again hopefully you can see that pattern and you get this v-shaped um, function and so there is an equivalence between the graph the equation the table of values all of these things are equal. Also notice that uh, y equals absolute value of x is the same as two straight lines joined together. And not just two straight lines, this one here is y equals x, and this one here is y equals negative x. So this is a slope of negative 1, this is a slope of 1, and a y-intercept of 0. So it's y equals x if the x value is greater than or equal to 0, and it's y equals negative x if those x values are less than 0. So if I go in this direction, uh, that's x values less than 0, I get the negative, and if I go x values greater than 0, I get y equals x. And this can be rewritten as something called a piecewise function. A piecewise function is simply a function that can be written in chunks, in pieces. So to write this as a piecewise fun function, uh, it's just a simpler way. Um, the y can be equal to, and then it equals to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. So that's this part. And it's equal to negative x if x is less than 0, which is the other part. OK, we can also graph more complicated absolute value graph. So this is y equals absolute x. It always looks like this. But we can graph um, y equals and some more information with absolute values on the right hand side. So let's uh, take a look at how to do that. That more complicated thing is going to look like this. So the x value is multiplied by a b. You can add a c, absolute value all that, multiply that by an a. Uh, add D, just a bunch of different variables. Um, here's the steps to actually um, showing what this looks like, to graphing it. First of all, you're going to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. In fact, you're going to find the coordinate of the vertex. And that coordinate is always minus C over B, comma D. And the reason behind that is the vertex is um, 
the V-shaped point here, and it's going to happen when this inside piece is equal to zero. So if you set that equal to zero and you solve that for x, you'll come up with this piece, and then if this is equal to zero, this is your y value of your coordinate over here. The second step is to graph what looks pretty complicated. y equals a b x plus c plus d for x is greater than or equal to negative c over b. There's uh, actually a slight shortcut to this. If you can take this and you can figure out what the slope is, then all you need to do from your vertex, so let's say your vertex is over here, all you need to do from your vertex is use your slope and you'll be able to create more points. Now your slope might go up and it might go down so that's where this condition comes into play as long as x is greater than this vertex then you do this slope if it's less than that x value of the vertex then you do the negative slope to that so if one slope goes up with the slope of one the other one comes down with negative one if this one goes up with a slope of two this one comes down with the slope of negative two again this would be way easier to see with an example so let's move on to one but just to finish this off, technically you then graph the negative slope for x is less than that same point. But let's take a look at an example of this. Um, I'll leave this find the coordinate of the vertex because that's the most important part. And uh, let's try graph y equals 3, 2x minus 1, minus 5. So we'll start off by finding that vertex. So it's uh, minus, so this is A, B, C, and D. So it's minus C. So minus minus 1 is 1, and the B value is 2, and then the D value is minus 5. Now that I have that, I'm basically done. So let me grab some graph paper. And what I really need is a nice scale. So each of these is going to be a half. So that'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this direction. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 5. This will also be minus 5 to 5. And my vertex is at 1 half down 5. The bottom of the V or the top of the V is right here. And then what I want to do is graph y equals 3 times 2x minus 1 minus 5, which is y equals 6x minus 3 minus 5, or y equals 6x minus 8. Now, what you really just need to know is that the slope of this line you're graphing is 6. So that means if I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I go over 1. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I go over 1. And so I just continue this pattern, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, over 1, and I get a V shape and then what it says to do and so that's what you're supposed to do with all the X values greater than one half and so that's all the X values in this direction and then uh, by the instructions it said graph minus 3 so you just put a minus in front of 2x minus 1 minus 5. You, you can solve this, but all you really care about is that this is minus 6x. This other stuff over here doesn't really matter. You, you don't really care where the y-intercept is. Um, you just need to know that it's a slope of minus 6. So it goes up and over, but uh, it goes over by 1 in the other direction. And so you have this very steep looking V-shaped graph. And those are the steps. Uh, again, the, the vertex formula is probably the hardest part of this because once you get a slope, you know that the other slope is just the negative of that and determine which way it goes. Finally, you can actually take the absolute value of any kind of function so this blue line here is y equals f of x, and I want to find y equals absolute value f of x, and I'll draw that in green. Well, it's fairly simple because all the y values are now going to become positive because absolute value takes negatives and positives and just makes them all positives. So these y values here in green are already positive. All of these ones and all of these ones are positive. Zero stays at zero. The problem is these points down here because this zero 
negative 4, this y value can't be negative anymore. So when I put 0 in and I get a negative 4, I'm now going to get a positive 4. So it's going to come up here at 0, 4. Same with this point that's down 3. It's now going to go up 3. It's going to be negative 1, 3. And this point that's at 1, negative 3 is going to become 1, 3 and land right here. And what I end up doing is I get this green shape. So the shape has an arc in the middle and it goes up like this. And that arc used to be down this way. That's the shape that I have in green. And in general, all you have to do is take anything that is below the x-axis, so anything that's down here, and simply reflect it into quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, something that's above the x-axis.